Five, four, three, two, one. Broadcasting live from the Newsmax studio in New York City. A fusion of politics, commentary, commentary. Entertainment, entertainment, and sports. Steve and his team bring you the latest news and opinion now. Here is Steve Malsberg. The thing about an organization like this is that typically when they control territory, because they're so violent, because they're so extreme, uh, over time the local populations reject them. All right, there you go, folks. The local populations are going to uh, reject uh, ISIS. Welcome to the uh, Monday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, John Kerry in Iraq today. Uh, and basically, the president and the secretary of state sticking to the line as ISIS is on the move. The president acknowledging a long-term and short-term threat to the U.S.'s security by ISIS, um, recognizing the threat to the borders of Jordan, Syria. There are no more borders in Syria. They want to eradicate the borders in Jordan. Well, there are borders in Syria, but th they're eradicating some of them. Uh, refugee problem pouring into Jordan. ISIS says they're going to Israel. And the president is counting basically on the fact that uh, people will find ISIS too violent and will throw them out. We'll have much more on that with the panel and uh, later on on a Gimme Five as well. So that's uh, the story there. We've been covering the plight of a, um, a woman, a mom in Sudan, uh, Miriam Ibrahim. Sudanese woman gave birth in Khartoum not too long ago in prison after being sentenced to death in May for allegedly converting from Islam to Christianity. Uh, 27 years old, she refused to renounce her Christian faith, and she was uh, sentenced to hang for uh, uh, apostasy. Well, she's been released. She's been released. Uh, American citizen, uh, members of Congress, very vocal and outspoken about this, and I don't know the details of how it happened. If Obama did it, if Kerry did it, if Hillary did it, I don't care. I, I, if they did, congratulations. Uh, because this is very important to get this woman out of, uh, of, of Sudan. And um, I don't know if she's coming back here, but she's, she's been released from prison anyway, and she's not going to be hanged. And uh, she's got a new baby, so all that is good. Now I'd like to see whoever got this done, assuming it was someone from the U.S., I'd like to see them get it done with our Mexican uh, Marine in Mexico and others. All right, Daniel Henninger joins us, but first, I want us all to watch this. It turns out... It turns out congressional investigations, including 14 congressional hearings, 30 interviews with IRS employees, 50 written congressional requests, and 750,000 pages of documents. And all of that has done nothing to substantiate false Republican claims uh, of a broader political conspiracy. False Republican claims. The arrogance knows no end. Uh, welcome back. And joining us as uh, promised is Daniel Henninger, deputy editorial page editor of the uh, Wall Street Journal. You might have heard of it and also a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. Hey, Daniel. Hey, Steve. Always great to talk to you, sir. Um, okay, uh, you wrote a great piece talking about the high price of Obama fatigue, talking about also how uh, this uh, IRS uh, scandal is not uh, Watergate. It's much worse than Watergate, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I, uh, let's start with the Obama fatigue. I mean, the polls have been devastating uh, in every area of the polls, even, even and I'm digressing here, even as this, Hispanic support, and I don't understand how this is possible. Because if the uh, Republicans are, have to, uh, you know, do immigration reform to get Hispanic votes, why did he lose, you know, 15 percent of Hispanics compared to uh, a year ago? Anyway, um, there is definitely Obama fatigue, and I got to think um, Obama, I don't know, realization that he that, uh, on on policy, on incompetence, on failure to lead, failure to be honest. There's a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing when I say fatigue, Steve, what I mean is that. Uh, the president uh, seems to have uh, basically withdrawn from the political field. Uh, it's no, it's no uh, mystery or secret that he's done with Congress. He barely deals with Congress anymore at all, preferring to either uh, try to execute strategy through uh, executive authority in the agencies, or as he does most of the time now, flying around the country doing multiple fundraisers for the Democratic party. And as to foreign policy, the mess we have in Ukraine and God knows now Iraq, um, you know, I think 
the president essentially did this to himself, which is to say it is a public, you know, it was quite public that the president was going to reduce the U.S. position and role in the world. This was known as leading from behind, their phrase, okay? And uh, what we've discovered about leading from behind is that the United States doesn't lead. It was a policy that was always going to run the risk of emboldening our adversaries. And after he failed to act against Bashar Assad in Syria, the famous red line in Syria, what followed was uh, the annexation of Crimea by Vladimir Putin and Russia, and now this extraordinary, uh, basically, takeover of northern Iraq by uh, the al-Qaeda group ISIS. And the president's just refusal to have be on the job every day dealing with the sort of things you would expect a president to do, whether it's domestic or foreign policy, I think has led to uh, the situation we have got ourselves in right now, a withdrawn president and uh, a world in flames. No, you're right. He's never had much of a relationship with Congress. I mean, there was nice photo ops, uh, nice uh, some, some kind of you know meetings at times in the Oval Office with you know the Republican leadership on one side, the Democratic leadership on the other, but, uh, you know, it's been, it's well known, as you know better than I, uh, he doesn't have the ability or the, the desire to, to forge relationships, and, and that's really a, a big factor in uh, the failures he's, he's had, as you just alluded well, that, to. That is one of the very strange aspects of this, Steve, is that the president seems to have no real uh, sort of retail political skills. Certainly he can go out and give a speech in front of a large number of people and meet and greet out there in the countryside. But as far as doing uh, the sort of day-to-day uh, -day political work you expect anyone in Washington to do, he doesn't like to do that. And you almost have to wonder, why did he want to be president? I mean, every president ultimately is, at some level, a politician. You have to be willing to engage with people, whether they're members of Congress, your own party, the other party, or opposition leaders out there in the country. Uh, we have apparently had no relationship for years with the head of Iraq, uh, Nouri al-Maliki. Uh, the Saudis have decided they had no relationship with the United States after uh, decades and decades of being our ally and have pulled apart from us. He didn't even meet with Kathleen Sebelius for all those months. Yeah. I mean, I remember that story of months and months, maybe, you know, lots of months, maybe even a couple of years at one point. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. And yeah. you remember the budget shutdown? There yeah. were no talks. He will not negotiate. He will not bend. He will not compromise. That was the talks. Yeah. And, uh, you know, politics, the reason we all talk about politics all the time, as you well know, Steve, is that it's a very powerful force. There are forces in play, both domestically and uh, overseas, and they take on a life of their own. And if a president doesn't engage with that, those forces can overrun him. And I think that's what's happening to our presidency now, unfortunately, with two and a half years left to run. Yeah, it is uh, It is frightening. And by the way, um, uh, there's a poll out. Uh, George W. Bush is now, it's a Gallup poll. Uh, George W. Bush is six points higher in favorability than Barack Obama. Six <laughs> points higher. Wow. You tell, it must, well, it must be because Obama's black, no doubt. I mean, uh, that must be the reason, of course. Um, yeah. All right, let's talk about this uh, this IRS uh, fiasco. Uh, in your view, it, it, it is, in my view, too, but I'm more interested in yours. It, it, it certainly is worse than, uh, than Watergate. I mean, I, I can't recall a scandal as in your face as this, as high up and important as the IRS, and, you know, hey, we, we threw them away. So what? What are you going to do to us? Yeah, well, with the emphasis on the fact that it is the IRS, I mean, let's understand the sub, I mean, the Watergate is one of the most famous scandals in the history of the country, but let's understand the substance, substantial difference between the two events. Watergate began with uh, a break-in at the Watergate Hotel by some Republican operatives operating out of the highest levels of the Nixon presidency, and what they were attempting to do inside the Watergate Hotel was penetrate the headquarters of the Democratic National Committee and find out what they were doing. So it was the political party in power and its professionals going after the professionals of the other political party. It was ugly, but that's what it was. What is the IRS? The IRS is the party in power, the Democrats, essentially sicking the most powerful and feared agency in the U.S. government, the Internal Revenue Service, on individual uh, groups of citizens out in the country, all 
over the country, hundreds of them who have done nothing more than organize themselves to get involved in politics. And suddenly these people, I'm sure all of them who paid their taxes every April, right off the top, every single year, suddenly found themselves with the IRS at their front door saying, tell us who your donors are, tell us what you talk about, tell us about your meetings. That to me is an abuse of power way beyond what was happening in Watergate. Absolutely, and then look at the, uh, I don't want to call it the cover-up, but look at well, how do you throw away hard drives? How do you not, uh, I understand there's a law that I'm going to talk about later on where the IRS was required, uh, to, maybe other agencies too, to keep hard copies of emails, um, you know, uh, in file in, 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 for, for situations like this. So uh, I, I don't understand how this is even deemed to be possible that, oh, we, you know, we all, all the six people, in addition to Lois Lerner, their hard drives all crashed and we threw them away. I mean, dog ate my homework. Yeah, or you know that old expression, uh, Steve, it quacks like a duck and walk, walks like a duck. Well, this thing quacks like a cover-up <laughs> at yeah. this point. It's a little hard to uh, explain it in any other way. But, you know, despite the seriousness of uh, their attempts to purport that uh, they had no involvement in this, even what we know, I think, is bad enough, Steve, which is starting with the president himself at his State of the Union speech in 2010 when he attacked the justices of the Supreme Court sitting in front of him uh, for their Citizens United yep. decision, yep. which enabled these groups. And then he said this was an endangerment to our democracy. And subsequently, you had letters written by major Democratic senators, Schumer, Durbin, Levin, and five or six others demanding that the IRS go out and investigate these groups. I mean, there's your smoking gun. Why don't why, why don't they call these these senators <laughs> before the committees as well? Yeah, you would think that that would be it. Hey, Daniel, this is great stuff. I mean, it's important that we get it out there and talk about it uh, in a way that, of course, the uh, the major networks are not. And we could always count on you uh, in the Wall Street Journal and others to do that. I thank you so much for being with us again, sir. All right, great to talk. Take to you. care, Daniel Henninger, ladies and gentlemen, deputy editorial page director of the Wall Street Journal and Pulitzer Prize winning reporter. Uh, it's a very interesting interesting and um, yeah if it quacks like a cover-up <laughs> to coin a phrase uh, when we come back the Mallsburg panel will be in full force and we'll bring it to you right here on the Steve Mallsburg show only on Newsmax television so don't go away